I did a video where I built this kit and it has these uh, LEDs on them. They don't look like LEDs, do they? There's these, there are these strips that are yellow, but what they are is they're a, a series of blue LEDs on some type of substrate, I'm not sure what, and then they have this yellow uh, phosphor put on top. It's, 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 it's actually a rubber. It's like a uh, silicone type of uh, material that has phosphor um, powder inside, mixed up inside. And so when the blue LEDs light up, they, they interact with the phosphor and the blue light gets converted into yellow light and green light and makes, uh, makes a white looking, a white, I did a video once on phosphorus. You can look that up. Um, so I thought today we would look at the various chips inside of this LED and how it's constructs constructed. So this will be chips of the day because there'll be lots of chips in there. I don't know exactly how many. I'm guessing maybe three or four. Um, but yeah, uh, when I bought the kit, it came with one extra. And uh, it's marked here. It says that the plus, the plus is this side, the short side and the, uh, and the, uh, cathode is the uh, is this side here but let's see if we can't do some damage on this and open it up yes indeed there they are Davy tiny little guys so yeah their gallium nitride is clear and uh, they're usually grown on uh, quartz, uh, sapphire. Sorry, sapphire. They're usually grown on top of sapphire because uh, the lattice structure of the two kind of match. Um, and generally, you will frost one side. You'll put a, a texture on it to get the light to go in one direction. But in this case, it's advantageous advantageous for the light to go in all directions. So they just keep it clear. Wow. Okay. And there's lots of them in there. Look at those little guys. Yeah. Lots of them. Phosphor. But that, that's very surprising to me. Okay. Learn something every day. See? Chip of the day. Chip of the day can be educational, even for MSI guy. Uh, that's pretty cool. All right. I'll leave, leave you with one idea for those who are very involved in optics, um, as I was, you are constantly required to violate Aton Du. <laughs> Your boss and their boss and everybody thinks you can get more light through a system and you keep reminding them that the second law of thermo that thermodynamics, Louisville's theorem or Aton Du are all make sure, or the uh, uh, Lagrange invariant, they're all versions of the same thing that you can only conserve a quantity that is area times solid angle, and you can't violate that. The laws of physics won't let you do that. But if you're a real clever guy, you can violate what most people would consider a ton do. If you consider a ton do, it is always a two dimensional structure with the emission into one hemisphere, sometimes two hemispheres, usually one. But if you have a two hemisphere system like this one, and the emitter and the substrate are both either transparent or translucent, you have to change your definition of Aton Du for that case. And if you did the simple calculation, you would find that these break Aton Du. A fluorescent light bulb breaks Aton Du. If you just take the surface area of a tube and how many watts of energy you have, of optical energy, 
you will find that a vacuum fluorescent tube breaks Aton Du, and that is because it's a translucent system. Some of the photons can pass through the emission surface. Anyway, a quick tip for all you optics folks out there, go impress your boss. <laughs>